The limit law about quotients tells us that the limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limit, it's provided that the limits of the component functions actually exist and that the limit of the function on the denominator is not equal to zero. But what happens if the limit of the function on the denominator is equal to zero? This video will begin to answer that question. In fact, there are two different situations we'll want to consider. It could be that even though the limit on the denominator is equal to zero, the limit on the numerator exists and is not equal to zero. Or it could happen that both limits are zero. We'll focus on the first situation first, starting with an example, and we'll look at the second situation later on. In this example, the limit of the numerator, negative 4x, is just negative 12, which we can see by plugging in 3 for x. But the limit as x goes to 3 of the denominator is 0. So we're exactly in one of these situations where the numerator goes to a finite non-zero number, but the denominator goes to zero. Let's see what happens as we approach three from the left first. As we approach three from the left, x is going through numbers that are slightly less than three. Numbers like 2.9, 2.99, 2.999, and so on. If we plug in those numbers into the expression here on our calculator, we're going to get answers of 116, 1,196, and 11,996. Even without a calculator, we could approximate these answers pretty closely by just thinking about the fact that since x is very close to 3, the numerator is about negative 4 times 3, so about negative 12. The denominator, 2.9 minus 3, is negative 0 0.1. That quotient of two negative numbers gives us a positive value of 120. Similarly, we could approximate the value when x is 2.99 as almost negative 12 divided by 0 0.01, which is 1,200, and approximate the third value as 12,000. Either way we do it, exact answers on our calculator or approximations in our head, we're noticing that these values are positive numbers that are getting larger and larger as x goes towards 3 from the left. This makes sense because if we look at our expression, as x goes towards 3 from the left, the numerator is getting close to negative 12, which is a negative number. And the denominator, since x is less than 3, will always be a small negative number. Negative over a negative is a positive, and as x is getting really close to 3, those denominators are getting smaller and smaller, and therefore the fractions are getting bigger and bigger in magnitude. So we can conclude that our limit is positive infinity. We can make a similar argument by looking at the limit as x goes to 3 from the positive side. It's supposed to be an x minus 3 here. So now x is going through values slightly bigger than 3, 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, and again, we can plug directly into our calculator and figure out the answers are negative 124, negative 1,204, negative 12,004. Or we can make a similar approximating argument. This answer is approximately negative 12 over positive 0.1, which is negative 120, and so on. Like before, if we consider the signs of our numerator and denominator, we can see that as x goes to 3, our numerator is a negative number. 
but our denominator is a positive number since we're approaching 3 from the right where x is bigger than 3. And therefore, our quotient is a negative number. It's still getting bigger and bigger in magnitude as x goes towards 3 because the denominator is still getting tinier and tinier, while the numerator stays pretty close to negative 12. So in this case, we're getting a negative number that's bigger and bigger in magnitude, so that makes a limit of negative infinity. Now since our limit on the left is infinity and our limit on the right is negative infinity, the only thing we can say about the limit as x goes to 3 is that it does not exist. Now let's look at another example. The limit as x goes to negative 4 of 5x over the absolute value of x plus 4. Notice that the limit of the numerator is just negative 20 by plugging in negative 4 for x, and the limit of the denominator is 0. Because we've got an absolute value in our expression here, it's screaming out at us to look at cases. Remember that the absolute value of x plus 4 is going to equal just x plus 4 if x plus 4 is positive. In other words, if x is greater than negative 4. However, if x is less than negative 4, then the expression x plus 4 will be negative, so taking the absolute value has to switch its sign in order to make a negative expression positive. All right, so that's going to come in handy when we look at the limit as x goes to negative 4 from the left and from the right. So when we approach negative 4 from the left, x is going to be less than negative 4. So we're going to be in this situation here where the absolute value gives us the opposite sign. That means that the limit as x goes to negative 4 minus of this expression is the same as the limit of 5x over negative x plus 4. Now reasoning as before, as x is going to negative 4 from the left, the numerator here is a negative number, pretty close to negative 20. The denominator, since x is less than negative 4, x plus 4 is negative. The negative of it is positive. So our quotient is negative. And since the denominator is getting really tiny while the numerator is pretty level at, at, at negative 20, this is, limit is going to be bigger and bigger in magnitude, a limit of negative infinity. Now let's look at the limit as x goes to negative 4 from the right. In this case, x is just a little bit bigger than negative 4. So we're in this case where the absolute value doesn't change the expression. So we can rewrite this as 5x over x plus 4. Now the numerator is still going to be a negative number. The denominator, since x is slightly bigger than negative 4, slightly to the right, this expression is going to be a positive number. Negative over a, over a positive is a negative. And again, as since the denominator is getting tiny, the fraction is getting huge in magnitude, and so this limit is negative infinity. Aha! Now in this case, look at what's going on. We've got a negative infinity limit on the left and a negative infinity on, limit on the right. So we can conclude that the limit as x goes to negative 4 of 5x over the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to negative infinity. In fact, we can confirm that by looking at a graph. If we look, check out the graph near x equals negative 4, 
it's going to look something like this with a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4, like expected. So we've seen that if the limit of f of x is equal to something that's not 0, and the limit of g of x is equal to 0, then the limit of the quotient could be negative infinity, as it was in the past example. It could also be infinity, or it could just not exist. I'm supposed to say it does not exist. Um, if the one-sided limits are infinity on one side and negative infinity on the other. Now, what about this second situation that I mentioned at the beginning? When the limit of f of x is 0 and the limit of f, g of x is 0. What can we say about the limit of the quotient in this situation? Well, in fact, in this situation, the limit of the quotient, it could exist and be any finite number or infinity or minus infinity, or it could not exist at all. In fact, in this sort of situation, which is called a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, anything could happen, which makes it in some ways the hardest, but in some ways the most fun situation of all. So in another video, we'll talk about techniques for dealing with 0 over 0 indeterminate forms and how to use algebra and other simplification techniques to evaluate these, these mysterious limits. So in this video, we've looked at the limits of quotients when the limit of the denominator is 0. We've done some examples when the limit of the numerator was not 0, but the limit of the denominator was 0. And we saw that these situations corresponded to vertical asymptotes and gave us an answer for the limit of the quotient of infinity or negative infinity, or sometimes infinity on one side and negative infinity on the other. We also hinted at fun things to come when we look at the limits in this situation when the numerator and the denominator are both heading towards zero and when anything can happen.